there's not many white guys coming to Pakistan these days, but I'm glad you're watching Continuum today because we're on the front lines of some major kingdom advancement. And if you just hang on a few seconds, I'm going to show you some things that you will never see on the news. Um, we're referring to the incident in Gorgia in Pakistan where many Christians were burnt alive, bodies were mutilated and we're here today with a Christian brother to tell his story to the people of the world. It happened on a Friday. And the Muslims have a prayer on a Friday. On loudspeakers, they shouted out and in the name of Allah. They started saying uh, things against Christians. He started saying that Christians are dogs. America's minions. Uh, it's uh, it's a reward to kill them. It's a jihad, a holy war to kill them. If you kill them, we will get we will go to paradise. They attacked uh, us for like six times. His father got hit in the temple uh, with, with a bullet. And they had that powder, that chemical, war chemical powder. Now, you know, they started firing from the streets, and uh, then they threw, they, they, then, you know, they pelted that, uh, that chemical, mm -hmm. uh, that actually increased um, the fire. It extinguished and killed off all the oxygen, uh, so they couldn't breathe. But the fire or the blaze you know, kept on becoming an inferno in a spiral way. So he says uh, his, uh, his brother um, had, a, uh, had his arm burning. He also told his children or his family to run away at, you know, at the quickest. Whoever gets saved would be a good thing. Hot air was coming out of uh, uh, that uh, room and no oxygen at all. And you know, they had those cooking pots on their heads like helmets. Now they're all hiding, and they could easily see that, uh, that the Muslims were taking out all their uh, items, the household items, uh, the TV, the fridge, uh, all those things, microwave, and you know they thought of this as some sort of plunder that they would that they had won in their holy war. We we're even treated worse than a dog. They do not even like to uh, give us uh, food that's even given to a dog. our Pakistan tour in a place called Johannabad the first night that we arrived here and preached in an area that really belongs to the Christians. A lot of Christian people live in there and Islamic people as well. But the interesting thing about Johannabad is that the Christians pack guns and because of that the Muslim extremists have not broken in and burned the houses although they've tried three or four times and this is something that we see a change coming in Pakistan that I want to talk to you about today and I want to show you some miracles that God is doing in this place and in Acts chapter 4 we're gonna take a little shift here now I'm gonna give give our guard back his gun and he's looking after us here and we always have guards armed guards in front of every church service and so on just for protection It's part of the requirements of the law but in the Word of God here, um, the disciples, particularly Peter, came back from a time of severe persecution. They were being persecuted by religious fanatics, as we see in Pakistan, so many of the believers are. And they lifted up their eyes to God and they said, they just prayed and he said, Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and to do signs and wonders uh, through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And it says, when they had prayed that, the place where they were assembled together, 
together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. That's what we're about today. That's what our Pakistani brothers and sisters are about today. We are about speaking the word in boldness and seeing a change come to this nation. In a few minutes, I'm going to introduce to you our pastor, apostolic leader in Pakistan, uh, Pastor Jamshed Peter, and he's going to give us an update on how things are going in the ministry. He promised that when we come together, he will come into the midst of us and be with us. I know God has more for me. And if you're not satisfied with you, it's because God has more for you. He said, you are the righteousness of Christ. We started... Uh... Our first church in 2001, and uh, in this nine years, we have planted 10 churches in different cities of Pakistan. And this year, uh, it is our plan to plant more churches. In four or five years, uh, I think we will double in numbers. We will be reaching at the places where nobody wants to go. We are discipling a lot of people. Because from evangelism, and we know we are shifting to the discipleship, although we are doing evangelism, but we are more focusing on our church members so they can become a good disciple, so that they can continue the work of the kingdom. I hope in four or five years, we will have very strong men and women in our churches. So they will be able to not only evangelize, some of them can also become full-time leaders in the churches. But I think we will have a generation in coming years that they will be able to answer. They will be able to defend their faith. Besides this, we have uh, schools. Uh, more kids are coming in our schools and we are imparting free education so they can become good citizen, good Christian. And in future, I, uh, I hope uh, we can have some good leaders out of our schools. Since we pl planted our first church, mm -hmm. I ha had started to tell my people that we very soon we are going to have our own building. Right. <laughs> but it took almost eight years uh -huh. to get this land. And uh, from last seven months, mm -hmm. we have been uh, working on this building. Right. We have completed two floors. Mm -hmm. Uh, including the uh, school rooms and the uh, office and a church hall. And now we are working on third floor. As we came up in here this morning and looking at the different classrooms, you've got 90 children in here yeah. studying right now. Mm -hmm. And you think once we finish this room and the other room or this remaining top floor here, yeah. you can accept 120. Yeah, we are really thankful to God mm -hmm. that He provided yeah. us our own building. Certainly. And then um, it gives a more secure future for the ministry, as well as for the children and then the church as well. And it's not a matter of just having a building and having all the, the, the equipment, but when, when God gives you those people, mm -hmm. you're looking at a good future for Pakistan. Yeah. And uh, what do you see coming out of the lives of some of these children? Oh, I'm very hopeful about these kids, mm -hmm. because these, these kids were just street people. Right. And uh, since they are in our school, I can see a great spiritual change, mm -hmm. not only in this uh, in these kids, but also in their in, in their families. Right, right. Uh, we have seen a lot of change in many families through these kids. Mm -hmm. Basically, one of the um, strategies of the school is that with the, when the children come in for their free education, mm -hmm. the parents will come into church as well yeah. and get to know Christ and begin yeah. to serve Him. Yeah. What portion of your congregation would you say come because of the, ch of the school? Uh, I can say uh, about 70 percent. 70 percent, yeah, yeah. wow, that's, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, so, because we have been using this school mm -hmm. as a tool of evangelism. These people are from broken families. Mm -hmm. There is uh, adultery, mm -hmm. there is uh, witchcraft, there is um, divorce in the family. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, the, People who call themselves Christian have two, three wives, right? And their kids are not going. In, uh, they don't have any future because of the sure. uh, bad act of their parents. So we are becoming their second parent and taking good care of them. Right. I have.